Well, greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. Been a little while since I made a video. Um, so tonight it's going to be really, really hot. Um, the, the weather has been scorching all day. We're like in high summer and there's no way I'm going to sleep in this heat. Fortunately, the skies are going to be really clear. So I've got the telescope out and I'm going to be spending the evening doing some astrophotography. So I've just configured the telescope. Um, it's still a little bit light out there, but Polaris is out, so I was able to configure it. And what I've got here is a light pollution filter. Hopefully you can see through that. Um, it puts a bit of a, a, a slightly purplish reddish sort of tint on everything, um, but it's supposed to take out a lot of the orange. This is the EOS 1300D. It's been astro um, modified, which means it's got two little filters in it. Uh, and one of the filters has been replaced with a with a piece of glass basically um, so if you can I mean you, you can take regular pictures with it but they come out a little bit more reddish um, and what it does it sees more of the red from the nebulas um, so uh, well that's that's the theory anyway hopefully I'm gonna put it to the test tonight right so that's just come off the telescope and that is a two inch uh, fitting that goes straight onto the back of the telescope and that is a two inch piece fitting as well that that goes straight onto the back of the telescope uh, and then obviously i plug the camera in and uh, get in there focus the telescope till it's somewhere roundy and then hopefully uh, we can pull up um, the camera controls here and with any luck we're uh, we'll be in business so let's make it happen Need a bit of light out there. So let's see if I can, uh, there we go. So I'm gonna put Stellarium on this screen, Backyardius on this screen. Uh, we can kill the lights now. Uh, we're gonna go over to uh, red. Hopefully you can still see me okay. Uh, this just means I get better night vision um, and it kind of looks cooler. <laughs> I can turn the brightness up here, I think, um, just to make it, well, that's pretty bright, isn't it? Um, and out there as well, I think. Uh, now it's about as bright as it goes. In fact, I'll, I shall kill that light because it might affect the pictures. Right, let's connect to the camera. In fact, what I'll do is I'll move you over. And hopefully you can see a little bit better over my shoulder here. Um, right, I need to connect to this Canon and hopefully, right, it's connected, we're happy. Uh, so we are currently looking at, I can find my telescope, there we go. So my, my telescope is looking at uh, Alderamin. Older Ramin, that's the positional star that I uh, aligned the telescope with. So let's just take a quick snapshot of it. So it's a light, uh, we're gonna do a duration of, let's just say five seconds on an ISO of 1600, start capture, and just make sure it's in the middle and I'm happy with it. I say the sky's still a little bit light at the moment, so, um, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out and I've got to get it focused as well. So there it is right there. Uh, it's a little bit off centre, but I can live with that. Um, now I've got to get it focused. So what I'm going to do oh, is use this thing. Whoops. Let's just kick you over. So what I'm going to do is use this thing. Now this is called a bar Bartinoff or a Batinoff mask. And what you do is you put it over the uh, the front of the telescope and you take a photograph and you'll end up with these um, this little star shaped thing I'll show you I'm just going to put this over the telescope now right now this is about the brightest star I've got in the sky at the moment sorry I keep kicking you <laughs> um, let me move the tripod a minute right hopefully I shouldn't kick you quite so much now well right, hopefully you can see this this is uh, like I say older older was it older something 
Alder Ramin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on it. Um, and then I'm going to take another picture. And then hopefully this one will have a like a an apparition on it. There we go. So I'll show you this on the screen. All right, what you can see is like a star shape. You've got like a, an X with a line going through the middle of it. That line, as you tweak the uh, the focus, that line moves to the right or to the left. That that's the line that you adjust. And the idea is that middle line. Uh, you need that to be a, as far in the middle as you possibly can. So I've come to understand it. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to tweak the uh, the focuser literally five a segment of five minutes at a time in one direction and see whether this um, alters see which way it alters if it goes that way then I know I need to focus the other way so I'm going to do that now there we go I just moved it five minutes clockwise so I'll just take another picture of so we're looking for that line to move oh, it's gone the wrong way so I did plus five. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back five and then I'm probably going to go back another 10 minutes. So I shall move the whole thing uh, literally a, a quarter of a turn, literally a 15 minutes on the clock. Um, and then hopefully that'll bring this line this way and more into the middle. So once this is exactly where I want it, um, that's it for the rest of the night then, as long as I don't change the camera or anything. Uh, this should be in focus. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Um, so you've got this this kind of X shape going like that, and then you've got this this line in the middle, and it's still a little bit that way on this side. Um, so I would say anti-clockwise another two or three minutes. So you just want this line to move that way a little bit, tiny little bit. Ready? There we go. I think we're done. And you've got these like fairly straight, sharp lines going uh, right across. So, OK, I'm happy with that. So that is the Bartinoff or the Batinoff mask um, in use. And that telescope is now totally in focus. So the next job is to find out if it's going to go to where I ask it to go. So at the moment it's on older arm in. Uh, let me just kind of remove the, the mask. Right then, where shall we go? Oh, you keep falling over. I've got you on the uh, the little gimbal, but it's powered down. Um, right, at the moment I'm just interested in making sure the telescope is reasonably aligned. So Vega is a fairly bright star, so I'm going to select Vega and send the telescope there. Hopefully you can see that it's moving. And that's going to be pointing out Vega. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. Right. Uh, he says killing his night vision. So okay, uh, let's have a look. Let's take a picture, start capture, and see what comes up on the screen. There you go, there's Vega. It's sort of towards the bottom of the screen. So I'm slightly very very slightly out of alignment but I can live with that that's fine okay so we know that works um, let's just have another look let's sort of point the telescope in the opposite direction so at the moment it's looking east uh, let's put it towards the west or the south Arcturus is fairly high in the sky I can uh, slew to Arcturus um, and see if that appears on the screen and if it does uh, then I'm going to be happy and I think I'll be uh, satisfied that we're aligned properly uh, and then we can get on and start taking some pictures. The problem is if it doesn't appear on the screen the telescope's not aligned properly and you'll end up with trails in the stars uh, if you take long exposure photographs because if it's not tracking properly uh, you're not going to be accurately sort of tracking the, the stars. And oh, it's pretty much in the middle. OK, so I'm happy with that. We're we're at well aligned. Right. So there's Jupiter. So I'm not sure. 
I might be able to get it in the sky. Oh, hello. Where's Eos gone? Um, sorry. Stellarium. Stellarium decided to shut down for some reason. Let's try that again. Um, let's move that over there. I'm having some teething troubles tonight. Okay. Um, where are we going? Jupiter. Uh, there's Jupiter. So... I'm not sure if a house is going to be in the way. I think, yeah, I think the house is going to be in the way. That's pointing straight at the house. I'll take a shot anyway, just to be uh, clear. We may have to wait for Jupiter to appear. Um, that'll be a big orange mess. Yeah, I thought so. So we're looking at the house there. So... Um, Arcturus, that's a really, really, really big sun. Um, if that's the, if the Earth is like a tiny pixel, then Arcturus is like this big, is or bigger. It's just it's just massive. Um, okay, let's take a shot of Arcturus, and then we gotta think about finding something interesting to photograph. Arcturus, there it is. Uh, we can zoom in on it. If I was to take a real quick snapshot of that, if I went down to about a hundredth of a second, in fact, let's put the ISO down to a hundred. One hundredth of a second. See if we get more detail on it. Ooh. Mm, not a huge amount. All right, let's try uh, one thirtieth. Yeah, it's just a slightly brighter blob. It doesn't really tell me anything. Well, it possibly does, but I don't know what I'm looking for. So, um, but there we go. That's uh, Arcturus, which is a really, 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 really big sun. Um, monstrously massive in comparison to the Earth, or in comparison to our own sun. Our own sun is a tiny little thing. Arcturus is this enormous great thing. Um, it sort of mind boggles just thinking about it. Um, okay, so what I really, really want to photograph is some uh, deep sky objects, so uh, nebula. Um, so let's have a look at... Oh, there's Saturn. Saturn is in the sky. It's looking sort of south southeast. I think it's a bit too low in the sky. As you can see here, it's pretty low. It's kind of over that way. It looks like the telescope's taking a long way round to get there. Um, <laughs> it does that. I think it's to stop all your wires getting tangled up and everything. Um, but that's going off towards. Um, Saturn. It would be great to be able to photograph Saturn, but like I say, I think I think the fence is in the way, or the tree or the shed might be in the way. But it might come up a bit late, uh, er, um, a bit higher later on, uh, which is what I'm hoping. So we'll see. Uh, might be lucky, but no. Come on, stop, stop, stop. No, let's point straight at the fence. <laughs> oh good grief look how low that's pointing um, somehow we I don't think we're going to be seeing Saturn uh, tonight um, I don't think it's going to go high enough in the sky um, for us tonight so what's in this sky that's of interest something will jump out at me in a minute and we've got what have we got? We got I know we've got the cigar nebula. Um, oh sorry, the cigar galaxy uh, and Bode's galaxy. Those two are uh, are in the sky at the moment and photographable. Might be a bit early in the evening. Let's go. Let's go and have a look. So let's send the telescope over to the cigar galaxy, and we'll have a look and see. Uh, what we can come up with oh hello that's looking pretty low in the sky oh it's going up that's good 
upskewed as well because you get less atmosphere and when you saw in the telescopes looking out there you get a lot of the the haze and that from the atmosphere but the more up it looks uh, the less of that haze you get something I've noticed um, okay all right we should get a bit be able to get a picture of that so let's have a go of the cigar galaxy let's just take a snapshot 3200 ISO and bulb mode and we'll go for a duration of five seconds just to get a snapshot and see what it's all about okay right oh there it is okay so if I zoom out here what you've got you've got Bode's galaxy there and you've got the cigar galaxy there hopefully you can see that if not I'll show you this photograph um, but at the moment the sky is still a little bit too bright now obviously these pictures are really really sort of blown up and faint at the moment but uh, what I'll do is once I've got the, the telescope in a really good position I'll take a series of photographs with a really low ISO um, and you literally have to just leave the camera sort of taking 10 15 20 shots of sort of three two three minutes at a time um, and then eventually you should end up with a stack of images each have their own little unique amounts of detail and when you stack those images uh, you should be able to pull out much greater detail um, so I think that's what I'm going to be doing tonight so in a way it's kind of good to discover the sky but if you want to actually get a really good quality photograph you sort of have to dedicate most of the evening uh, just to that one photograph so um, you know I think uh, it's times like this you need a really good book <laughs> I need to wait another hour probably for the sky to get a lot darker and then hopefully I can start snapping but in the meanwhile uh, what I'll do is I'll have a little look around see what else is in the neighborhood and uh, see if I can get some snapshots I'll tell you one thing I have noticed with all this silver lining around the shed it's half dead in the sound um, my voice sounds very very quiet I'm, I'm talking quietly obviously because i don't want to disturb my neighbors but um i it's it's i can really feel like the the sound is being deadened in here there's no echo which is quite strange um, and also uh, if you come in here in the mornings it's freezing cold in here it really really retains or, or keeps the heat out i came in here about 11 o'clock today and the sun had been shining baking everywhere it was really lovely and cold in here so it's almost like a refrigerated, you know, like a refrigerated van. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be like in the um, in the winter. Hopefully, it's going to retain the heat. That's the idea. So I've got a little heater in here now, and in the winter time, if I'm out here, you know, really late at night, um, it should hopefully um, retain the heat. Okay, so that's the cigar that. Um, uh, nebula and Bode's galaxy I'm going to come back and photograph those later but in the meanwhile let's have another little look around and see what's about okay so where are we dumbbell nebula so, ah, wow hey look at that where are we there it is Ooh. hey that's not bad oh I'm definitely writing that one down okay um, bell. there we go that that's not bad for a snapshot i'll tell you what let's drop the iso to 800 and we'll do a 45 second shot and see what that looks like there's color in there some serious color i've got blues i've got reds let me just turn that volume down as well Oh, hello. Got some major streaking going on there. What's going on there, then? Looks like a meteor shower. I'm wondering if my telescope mount is uh, struggling with the weight of having that extra DSLR on the top. That could be it. I don't normally get this kind of an issue. So I could be having an issue with the extra weight, in which case I'll have to remove it. Right, I'm going to carry on searching uh, for candidates to start photographing tonight. Um, the sky is definitely getting stuck darker and there's more stars coming out now, I can see. So hopefully we should have a good night of um, photographing. But uh, for now, I'm just messing about, just sort of uh, trying to figure out 
what it is I want to photograph although I think that dumbbell nebula was quite spectacular so I might find myself going back to that unless I can find um, some other suggestions uh, in uh, in the web here like M33 although we uh, didn't we did we just try M33 let me have, let's have a look um, M33 I think it was under the ground wasn't it yeah it was um, okay so anyway leave this with me and uh, I will come back to you uh, when I found the candidate right then that's it that's uh, that's done that's the Bartinoff mask uh, on and we're in focus so what I need to do now is head back to um, what do you call it dumbbell we're going to go to the dumbbell D U M B uh, dumbbell right come on in. off you go nope it's not going there why is that let's shut down Stellarium and reopen it whoa that's bright um, I should don't even know don't even know whether the red lights are necessary now uh, because I don't need to I mean to be honest the, the point of the red light is so that your night vision um, you, you see more stars with your eyes um, but it's to be honest it's only really handy when you're actually looking down through the eyepiece at the telescope but because I'm doing all this on uh, the computer it's not quite so um, essential uh, it kind of it gives it a bit like you're sort of in I don't know in a submarine or something but um, <laughs> Uh, right, sorry, where were we going? To the, uh, the dumbbell. It was a dumbbell nebula, that's right. There it is. Okay. There you go, I can hear, the, hear it moving. And, yeah, we can see it tracking in now. So, we'll take a snapshot. See exactly where we're at. And hopefully we should be in business right so we're there right then so let's uh, figure out exactly uh, what we need in the way of well first of all what I'm going to do is go, go back down to 400 and take another 120 min, uh, second shot and see that's just another two minute shot and it will see whether we've still got star trailing or not fingers crossed we haven't got star trailing touch wood um, if we have then I'll just I'll cut my cloth accordingly and then I'll just um, I'll just have to uh, just go down to whatever length of time I can without getting oblong shaped stars 120 seconds that looks good but nope alas we have star trails again okay so that exercise didn't work so I'm gonna have to come down to about 40 40 seconds so coming up on 40 seconds so let's see what we get okay much clearer uh, we st uh, we've still got star trailing why is that I've, star trails have never been a problem for me I've been doing um, you know sort of easily 40 50 60 seconds even two minute um, what's his name so two minute exposures and I've not had star trails this is the first time I've had a star trails issue um, but uh, that's quite annoying I'm not quite sure what to do now um, maybe if I go down to ISO 800 do 30 second exposures I may have to choose a different target. That's quite annoying. Um, I think I seem to get star trails when the telescope's pointing in a certain direction. Um, I, I, I think if I was to point it in the opposite direction or, or you know, a different different direction, I think the star trails would go away. Yeah. See, oh, I haven't. I've still even then at 30 seconds I've still got slightly oblong shaped stars 
Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to uh, drop the dumbbell cluster. Let's go to this cluster here. Let's see whether we can get a shot of this. This looks pretty, pretty amazing, doesn't it? Pretty gaseous. Let's see if we can get that. All right, let's just try this uh, snapshot. Ten seconds. Let's just see whether this this is worth taking a shot at. Right, there's no, I can't see any of the, the nebula, nebulosity there. Uh, however, if I were to do a, let's say a 30 second exposure on a, uh, we'll keep the ISO up again. This might be uh, worth doing. Uh, you can see a little bit of the, the redness there, but these are going to require some fairly long exposures. Now that was a 30 second exposure. And interestingly enough, I have round stars. So there you go. I just pointed it to a slightly different place in the sky and I'm not getting star trailing. Uh, so there's obviously something in my setup that I'm not doing right. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, but... Um, okay. Cigar Galaxy was the other one, wasn't it? That was the one I originally started uh, looking at uh, when we first set out earlier so let's take a snapshot make sure we're in position and then we're going to go for it i'm going to set it all up ready to go okay there they are that looks good um so what i'll do is i'm going to do an iso of 800 i'm going to do a duration i'm going to try let's try 100 seconds and let's just see if we get any star trails or not. And if I can get 100 seconds without any star trails, right, and we're looking into the northern sky, because um, it was in the western sky that I was getting star trails. So I'm hoping uh, that the northern sky uh, is going to be okay. It looks like Andromeda's possibly coming into view now because that was a bit low in the sky earlier but it's it's, it's up there now <laughs> so there's all these nebulas that i couldn't see earlier they're all starting to come into view now so it's all of a sudden i'm just flooded with choice um, but now i'm going to stick with the cigar galaxy and run with that so 97 98 99 100 uh, let's see what we've got here there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so much more information there. That was on a low ISO of 800. So have a look at the stars. Let's see whether they're um, they're round. See, round stars. So that's on 100 seconds. There's a very, very slight elongation going on there, but I can live with that. So I think I'm going to stick with 100 seconds. It's not too blown out. Um, so I think, I think I could just go with that. And let's try one of these brighter stars. And make sure that they're, um, they're definitely round, aren't they? Yep, those are round stars. Okay, so we've got ourselves a target. So I'm going to set up a series of, let's say, 20 photographs at 100 seconds each. Uh, so all I've got to do on here is go, just tell it the number of exposures I want, which is 20. Uh, 20 these are my lights um, duration 100 seconds ISO 800 uh, and I think there's still quite a bit of noise digital noise there I don't know let's let's just go for it shall we I just wonder if I could do ISO 400 let me just try something uh, 612 150 seconds let's try that I'm going to do 150 seconds on a ISO 400 if I can get away with it there's a lot of decision making to do here I, I can see me um, losing an awful lot of time just trying to make my mind up as to what I'm going to be doing so sunrise is 448 so I've literally got one two I've got about two hours before it starts getting light so I need to get on with this. So that's the 100 second version. And this is the 150 second version. Much more information there, but the, the stars are slightly elongated. 
So yeah, I've got very slight, very slight star trails. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to go with uh, the 100 seconds, and going to take 20 exposures. So that's ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the file uh, where backyard EOS is, and essentially all of these pictures that I've taken, these are all the pictures I've taken today. I'm just going to drop those into a file because this is where the uh, backyard EOS dumps all the files. So they're out of the way. So all the files that are now produced from here forward will be from this batch. So these are my lights, ISO 800, duration 100, uh, bulb 20 exposures. That's it. We're ready to go. So I'm going to hit start capture and that's it. That's all I can do now for the next uh, 100 times 20, which is uh, 2000 seconds. 2000 seconds divided by 60, 33 minutes. So for the next 33 minutes, I can't do anything. I've been looking at this stuff for weeks and weeks and weeks now, and my brain still hurts when I uh, when I try figuring it out. So I think the only thing that's really going to um, cut it is just getting experience and and just I mean doing what I'm doing tonight. Tonight this is the first time I've done a proper. Uh, photographic session where I've got like 20 frames and there we go we just finished um, so that is it that's all 20 done and sorry I'm lying that was 19 this is 20 of 20 now and then as soon as that's done I'm gonna go out pop the lens lens cap on and do another 10 at exactly the same setting so I'm not gonna do 20 um, I'll just do 10 and then I'll, I'll do my, um, what is it, bias frames? I can't remember. I'll do the other ones as well, which is with, with the, the fastest shutter speed. Flat frames, no, bias. Keep lens cap on, take 20 or more pics of exactly the same settings as the light frames, except change the shutter speed to as fast as the camera can take. Uh, the temperature is not important. Okay. But I'm not going to bother with flat frames for this. But technically, this will be my first proper stacked photo. So I'm kind of hoping it's going to turn out all right. Um, I mean, it looks OK. I've got like round round stars for me is the most important thing. And uh, they're all coming out round. So and we've got some reasonable detail there for the, from the Cigar Nebula. Or the, from the, is it a Nebula or is it a Galaxy? I think it's a galaxy, isn't it? And then from Bode's galaxy as well. So there we go. Um, like I say, I suppose, oh well, I mean, there's not a lot more to see on this video, really. Like I say, I'm just going to go out and take another 10 shots. And then I'm going to uh, call it a night. And then I'll try to have a little go with these pictures in the morning and uh, put them in the stacker and see what comes up there we go that's all done now um, so well what I'm going to do I'm going to change the the name of this frame type from light to dark and then I'm just going to drop the exposures down to 10 I'll just go and pop this on and then I can hit start again so let's do that now just realize something actually I don't know if it's uh, if it's made a difference or not but I left that red light on outside uh, on the floor I'm just wondering if it might have had some influence on the the amount of red haze I'm seeing here um, I don't know but right there we go that's it so um, everything stays the same these are now dark frames it actually says dark there now I'm gonna go for 10 exposures again a hundred um, seconds per exposure at 800 ASA and uh, I suppose I've got to think about packing everything away and clearing up. This is the fun bit. I've got to pack everything away. It's like now um, it'll be about half past two in the morning when I when I do it. It's like ten past two now. And uh, like so half past two in the morning, you've got to be really quiet. I've got neighbours all around me and I have to do it really quietly. That's why I've drawn the door closed and I'm talking quietly. Um, so hopefully nobody can uh, hear me 
nattering away to sort of sort of myself but you guys are obviously here as well so anyway i think i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna pack everything up and start thinking about sort of putting things back and then uh head head to, head to bed because it's uh it's gonna be start getting light soon and it's gonna be another scorching hot day tomorrow so um i'm probably not gonna, gonna get a lot of sleep over the next couple of days so uh fun and games but there we go look this was probably a, a really dull video this wasn't probably going to be for everyone it might have been uh uh you know just a interesting for sort of just sit alongside me while i'm doing uh this astro stuff um but like i say not going to be ever for everyone but do let me know if you like this kind of video or if it was you know why right as a curiosity but not the sort of thing you could sit and watch regularly um but uh, yeah, please, um, if you can give me some feedback on this video and just kind of let me know, you know, uh, whether it's worth doing again or not, um, I would appreciate it. So that's it from me. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of the day and uh, I'll catch up with you in another video, hopefully very soon. Till then, take care.